Hello world, it's Vagabond here. Glad to see you in this new video. And today is the beginning of my adventures around Mongolia. I'm going to explore this wonderful country, the homeland of Chinggis Khan. And I'm currently in 250 kilometers from Mongolian border, so I'm about to hitchhike there. Such a wonderful location is going to be our starting point. This is Selenga river that originates in Mongolia, flows across Buryatia and flows into Baikal eventually. We are in the middle of Buryatia, that is a typical regional scenery, steep, some mountains on the background and pretty good Asphalt covering of the highway. Сторону кияхта подросся? Да. Сторону кияхты. Сторону кияхты. Да. Дугуснозерска. Нормально, хорошо. Здравствуйте. Здравствуйте. Благодарю. Все, счастливо доехать. I'm gradually moving forward to the border. So far, I have hitchhiked three cars. And it's a hundred of kilometers left to Mongolia. Here we are, guys, in the border town of Kakhta. There is the actual border checkpoint. This is how the border checkpoint looks. The right part of it is for trucks and the left one for uh, regular vehicles. So the cars in the line are exclusively Mongolian. I'm looking for the car with Russian plates, like this one, for example. Здравствуйте. Вы сейчас приезжаете, да, через границу? А можно? Тут нельзя же вроде пешком, да? Ну, я очень бюджетный путешественник, то стопом езжу, если это возможно, конечно. Crossing the Russian-Mongolian border took two hours and was not a problem for us. Having passed the border, we firstly went to the nearest currency exchange. We exchanged Russian rubles for Mongolian togriks at the rate of 1 to 47, which was not the most favorable rate at the moment of the filming. If we had arrived in Mongolia a couple of days earlier, for one ruble we would have received 52 togriks. I wish ruble was a more stable currency, but maybe in the next life. In addition, Russian debit cards didn't work in Mongolia. I had a working card issued in Kazakhstan, but it was clear that I had to have some cash. The Mongolian border settlement looked similar to some Buryat villages, with the only difference in form of street signs in another language. Having exchanged the currency, we went to Suhbater, the nearest Mongolian border town. All right, here we are in the city of Suhe Bater. The first task for now is to buy a local SIM card somehow. SIM card you sell? No. No? And where do you know? Bokru, right? Bokru? Yes. There is a fifth and a fifth. There is some really good infrastructure in the city, for example, this is a newly built kindergarten. I have found the most stereotypical supermarket ever, it is called Russia, and it has such a massive matryoshka right in front of its entrance. The groceries here are not entirely Russian, well, some of them are definitely Russian, but some are definitely Asian. Does look as Korea. It's hard to identify the prices because I still haven't got used to local currency and I need some time to adapt to them. Here is 5,000, approximately 2 bucks. They have such an interesting market street in the city that's kind of full of various grocery stores and stores for clothes, secondhand and stuff. What a wonderful exterior of the train station building in Sukhbatar. Let's check it out from the inside. There are two major trains from here to Ulaanbaatar, the capital city, and also an international train to Russia. Now Ulaanbaatar, no билетов? No 
There are no tickets to Ulaanbaatar for evening train So I have to either overnight here in Suhebadar Or basically hitchhike Horses are chilling straight on city street What a beauty The weather now is pretty reasonable both to hitchhike and pitch a tent but who knows what's gonna be at night because I don't have my internet connection so I can't check weather forecast the weather on the second day in Mongolia is disgusting it has been raining since night time and I missed my morning train because of it because I finally pitched the tent and in case I tried to fold it I had to pull out all of my things from here they would be entirely wet I pitched my tent on the territory of the former industrial zone here is the situation I decided to try to hitchhike towards Ulaanbaatar at least to the next relatively big town on my way buy a sim card there not to stick here not to spend another day in Suhbatar Sainu Darhan Ulaanbaatar Би Монголор Ярдагуй. Орус. Арса. Да. Спасибо. Да. Иван. Дархан или Уланбатор. Два варианта. Вы по-русски не говорите. Чуть-чуть. Чуть-чуть. Вчера. Вчера приехал. А, вчера. Да, да. Вот. Это Сухбатор или Сбат? Да, в палатке. А, в палатке. В палатке. Да, 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 дождь. Ночь. Дождь. Да, да, да. Ну ничего, нормально. Нормально. Да. Ну вы живете там. Да. Ну а тебе... Помогай. Понял. Как тебя зовут? Ваня. Иван. Меня зовут Баир Саха. Баир Са? Баир Саха. Баир... Баир... Праздник. А, Саха. Значит праздник. Саха. Красивый. Красивый праздник. Пожарный. 14 лет. 14 лет на пенсии. Да. Счастливо. Да, давайте. Ага, до свидания. So the first hitchhiking experience in Mongolia appeared to be very, very good. A friendly Mongolian retired man stopped and gave me a lift approximately 20 kilometers. The city of Suhbatar, the one from there I got here, basically and i even see a number of yurtas mongolians national dwellings straight in the field All right, we finally got to the city of Darhan in just a couple of hours from Suhebadar. It seems that hitchhiking works pretty well in Mongolia and despite misunderstanding in terms of the language barriers, well, the idea of hitchhiking is understandable and acceptable here. So here in Darhan I accidentally found this sort of the public cafeteria where you can order various Mongolian stuff. I have eventually ordered this tea from the second attempt because initially they got me local salty tea with milk which is basically impossible to drink but finally i managed to change it each window presents a national cuisines for example this window is for russian cuisine uh, this one for asian for mongol for mongol uh, for european dishes and stuff i believe that this is a lamb meat part of the cabbage rice two slices of bread and it all costed me 10,000 local togrugs which is basically 200 rubles or let's say three or maybe four US dollars that is hilarious but the office that I visited didn't sell freaking steam cards 
They, I have no idea what they were doing there, but I have no idea where to find this SIM card because most of the stores here are either like grocery stores or sort of the markets. I, have, I haven't even seen a single shops with electronic devices and shit. I have good news guys, I finally bought the SIM card. Some local people helped me to do it. So let's go straight to the capital city. The pouring rain has just finished a couple of minutes ago. There is a gas station so I got there to somehow hide behind its roof and I was invited by the only worker of this gas station straight to the station to the building and she shared some tea with me so that was extremely hospitable she was so uh, welcoming pretty good road has accidentally ended and we switched to this sort of the country road which is actually runs parallel to the highway towards Ulaanbaatar uh, my guess is that this road is just partly built or here is sort of the complete reconstruction of this stretch therefore cars have to somehow detour it via the fields uh, via the step while riding via virgin lands of step we accidentally encountered this concrete factory not exactly concrete but i'd rather say asphalt this asphalt will be used for the construction of this new highway that is going to connect to Lanbadar, the capital city with northern territories of mongolia Durhan and Ulaanbaatar actually reminds me of the road of bones between Magadan and Yakutsk. If you haven't seen the video from that journey that I traveled down this road, then follow the link that has just appeared on the screen. We are still on the road. This is the fifth hour of our journey, I believe. In four hours we have covered approximately 120 kilometers due to the very disgusting quality of this road uh, it's 80 kilometers left to Ulaanbaatar I believe we will be there in a couple of hours we have finally reached the capital city of Mongolia Ulaanbaatar local time is 3 a.m. and it means that the road that took us 200 kilometers uh, was covered in seven hours. So now I'm going to pitch my tent somewhere in this uh, field on the outskirts of Ulaanbaatar and in the morning probably hitchhike straight to the city. Like now we are within its limits but on the very very outskirts. This is the view from my tent today. Outskirts of Ulaanbaatar. The city is becoming sprawling, new real estate is being constructed. They construct the whole micro districts, not just one single house, but a number of them at the same time. We are on the back side of a bus stop and here is sort of the plan of buses that run through here. They basically listed all of the stops of all of the routes that run here. And now I have to find the one which is somewhere in the downtown of the city to get to my hostel that I booked yesterday. 72 kilometers, this is the length of this route. I believe this is like back and forth, but still quite a lot. That was actually my bus. I kind of figured out which bus I need to take, but they are all overcrowded and I'm not sure. Perhaps it would be better to try to hitchhike some some kilometers yeah, i managed to hitchhike and that was pretty easy let me say now we stick in a traffic jam traffic jams and all and butter is probably one of the biggest burdens of the city but aside from it the city is building a lot of new high rises new districts appear i believe yearly so one of the cheapest hostel in ulan butter that i have found a six bedroom room costed me eight bucks 
very nice. The toilet, the shower, kitchen, washing machine, stove, sink, pretty much everything. Due to severe traffic jams in Ulan Badr, they use police officers to regulate the traffic. So far I haven't understood if Ulan Badr is the city for cars or for pedestrians or neither to pedestrians nor for cars because the sidewalks here are in pretty dilapidated condition the car traffic here is so intense public transportation is not really developed we are approaching the railway station the major train station in the city and pedestrian traffic is also getting intense all right this is the one by their main railway station i've got here to meet one of my friends who is living here in ulan Badr. after meeting him we will explore the city I would call this place a pigeon square. Look how many of them is gathered here. Here must be a fountain, but it doesn't work. But at least we can roll these wonderful stones. By now, this is the biggest Buddhist temple I've ever seen. It's so colossal. <laughs> The temple was absolutely outstanding. You've just seen the scale of this statue. It's so incredible. It's so massive. Stalinist architecture buildings that are pretty much well preserved. On another side also, another type of such construction. It's always curious to observe how in modern society some old stuff coexists with new ones. Like this monastery surrounded by newly built business centers. Do? Do? Uh, сколько? How much? Тысячу раз? Yeah. Now I can make the conclusion that traffic type here in Ulan Badr is 146% Asian. I mean that nobody basically follows uh, the driving rules, everybody just uh, uh, go across intersections when they want, they don't really follow signals. It doesn't really matter if it's red. It's so difficult to get used to it. Only on the second day in Ulan Badr I have found the river. This river is pretty pretty massive and hectic. Ulan Badr is a sprawling city. Look at these newly built small houses. The city is getting bigger and bigger each year. Its population is also increasing. Uh, I guess mainly because of the Inner migration, people from rural parts of Mongolia migrate here to the capital city. We are now at the peak Zaisan. This is one of the mountains around Ulan Badr. Here is the monument to Soviet soldiers who helped Mongolians to get uh, their independence. Inside the monument here is a massive panoramic mosaic depicting the brotherhood of Soviet and Mongolian nation. There are some Soviet soldiers, Soviet and Mongolians together. That is what I call urban cooking. Due to the fact that there is a national holiday in Mongolia that are lasting for four days actually, and for four days each cafe here is closed, in Ulan Butter, therefore I have to um, deal with food like somehow on my own. Therefore I'm just boiling the water now for the noodles. Today is the beginning of my side trip to the town of Sharingol. This is basically the Mongolian province and I'm going to visit it by a passenger train. Look at this beauty. This is a passenger train that runs from the capital city of Mongolia, from Ulaanbaatar to Sukhbaatar, the city at northern territory of Mongolia close to Russian border. But there are two additional wagons at the rear of this train that run straight to Sharingol. The peculiarity of this route is that this is going to be the mixed freight passenger train. This is the major destination of this train and this is the destination of my wagon. Okay, 
Well, the feature of this train is that this is the Ford class wagon. Here, they place not 54 people, but 81. Three persons occupy one bank, essentially. Upper banks of this wagon are kind of free, so if you want, you can lie down here. Train hopping north of Ulaanbaatar is actually the most desirable destination because you see that the mountainous terrain begins right after our train leaves the city. Oh, we can even see the head of it. The locomotive of the train is so long, it's 21 carriages. Fields filled with yurtas, national Mongolian dwellings. I'm not sure if they're visible on the screen, but it seems that Mongolians use them as summer houses. What a beauty! They simply tent in front of the railway. Let me tell you that I saw several tent shops in Ulaanbaatar that specifically sell various kind of tents. Therefore, I'm still dreaming about pitching my tent near a yurta to be paid respect by Mongolians. <laughs> Here we are in Sharingol, this is the building of its train station and this is our train, two passenger wagons and nine empty gondolas for coal. I arrived in Sharingol, a small Mongolian town of miners that was founded in 1961 as a result of development of a coal deposit discovered back in 1930s by Soviet engineers. The coal mine is a city forming enterprise in Sharingol and probably the most remarkable place in the town. Before the collapse of the Soviet Union, a number of Soviet engineers lived and worked in Mongolia. The town of Sharingol was also built with the assistance of Soviet Union, which is noticeable in its architecture. In the 1980s, about 2.5 million tons of coal per year was mined in Sharingol. In the early 90s, Soviet support was terminated and Soviet engineers left the country. As a result, coal production significantly decreased. By the time the enterprise was privatized in 2003, it had been producing only 600,000 tons per year. Subsequently, coal production started increasing again, because since 2005, Mongolia has been exporting coal abroad. Sadly, I didn't have a lot of time to explore the town deeper, because my train was going to leave Sharingol in less than two hours. So I took the same mixed freight passenger train and made it to Darhan. In Darhan, I explored several places of interest that I missed during my first short visit there. Among those places was a wonderful mosaic on the building of the railway station, glorifying eternal friendship of Mongolian and Soviet nations. I assumed that mosaic was devoted to Soviet-Mongolian friendship because opposite this mosaic was a reduced copy of the Soyuz 39 launch vehicle, on which the first Mongolian cosmonaut Zhukder Demidin Gurakcha made the first space flight in Mongolian history. Zhukder Demidin made it together with the Soviet cosmonaut Vladimir Genibekov. Another remarkable symbol of cooperation between modern Russia and Mongolia was the Darhan Children Railway constructed in 2021. It had a length of 2 km and a gauge of 750 mm. That Children Railway used the same electrical and communication devices as the conventional railway. The Children Railway was served by children who studied to be railway workers in specialized educational institutions. 
Two special classes were created for young railway workers in one of the Darhan schools, in which children would be able to learn how railway works. Students who work on children railways get acquainted with such professions as locomotive driver, conductor, station duty officer, electrician, etc. After sightseeing in Darhan, I made it to Sukh Bader by freight train. Having arrived in Sukh Bader, I decided to return to Ulan Bader the same day by hitchhiking. I had stopped at the gas station to tie my shoelaces when a local biker started talking to me. He spoke good English and, having discovered that I was traveling around Mongolia, he invited me to stay at his house. Thanks to such a fortunate chain of events, I managed to overnight in Sukh Bader and moved to Ulan Bader the next day by a passenger train. I got off the train at western approaches of Ulan Bader and at that point I went hitchhiking across the country. Hello world, it's Vagabond here. We are now on the outskirts of Ulaanbaatar, the capital city of Mongolia. And this is the beginning of the next stage of my adventure around Mongolia. Basically, I'm going to hitchhike across the whole country from here, from Ulaanbaatar to Western Mongolia and enter Russian Altai. Somewhere here must appear the map. So now you can imagine how long is the distance that I have to cover. It's more or less 2000 kilometers and therefore I guess it will be like, it will take five or maybe six days. I got here to this outskirts by a passenger train from Northern Mongolia. That's why I start this journey late in the evening. It's just an hour before the sunset and therefore I don't expect that we cover a lot of ground today. The task for now is to catch evening flow of cars that going outside the Ulaanbaatar. Um, so I know the Mjonga Gui Arvai Her Ru Yavdak Altai Arvai Her Tuda. This way? This road? This way, yeah. Uh, where are you going? I'm going to Altai, to Russian border. Western Mongolia, you know? Uh, I know, I know. Yeah. So, can you give me a list? Is it possible to go with you this uh, way? You can sit. Oh, there, okay. <laughs> so, you go also this way, right? Yes. Are, are you going to go Arwa? Okay. Yeah. yeah. Arwa, Arwa is a province. Okay. Okay. So anyway, like you go this way, when you turn from the road, I can get off, so it's fine. Okay. Where, where are you from? Uh, from Russia, actually. Oh. Do you speak Russian? Uh, no. Okay. So she she can speak Russian because she studied. Um, in Russia. Okay. She, well. is a, she is a doctor. Have a nice tea. Yeah, thank you very much. Thank you very much. Have a nice evening. Can you speak Mongolian language? I can only say Bayertai <laughs> and Mashik Bayerlala. That was so unexpected that the person who gave me a lift, the first person for today, spoke English and pretty much good English. So that was a satisfying but short ride. So now I have to change and carry on moving westbound somehow. It's raining right now, but the rain is not really heavy, so it's manageable, I believe. Most of cars here turn right because there is a celebration of some Mongolian festival. But I have to go further, that's the thing. Hi. Uh, I go to like Altai, you know? I go this way. Can I, can, can I go with you? I don't speak Mongolian. Be Mongagu Altai Ru Yavdak. Altai, West Mongolia. Yep. It's me in Ulan Batar. Zaisan. Monument Zaisan. Yeah. Uh, that, that's the way I'm traveling sometimes. Parkour. You are. That's, that's insane. That is insane. Uh, sport? Uh, football? Is it, is it football? Or? Football. Or basketball? Basketball. 
Basketball or football? Basketball. Basketball. Wow, oh, I see. Me. Yeah, yeah, I see. Rara. Five? All only five? Ten. Yeah. <laughs> Yurta. Yeah. Yeah. Wow. Mongolia. Uh -huh. Mongolia. Oh. Uh -huh. Alright guys, this is the beginning of the second day of my hitchhiking adventures across Mongolia. Uh, yesterday in the evening I was uh, treated in so welcoming way by local Mongolians who basically shared some food uh, with me in their cafe and they also hosted me in their yurta. This is a national Mongolian dwelling that is staying somewhere in this field. We managed to communicate via Google Translate, but let me tell you guys, if I had no Google Translate, that would be even more challenging to understand each other. I'm going to carry on moving westbound somehow, and I guess for today it's possible to cover at least, or maybe even 500 kilometers. It should be doable. Oh, I don't speak Russian or Спасибо большое. Все, Бер, тай. The first car for today has given me a lift on approximately 40 kilometers to the town of Lun. There is a river that also flows through Ulan Bader, and a lot of locals just come here for like uh, for the weekend, and some of them are go fishing, like people who give me a lift here basically. Not going to spend a lot of time here, so let's carry on hitchhiking. So there are the gasoline prices in Mongolia. The most common type of gas number 92 costs two, two and a half thousand Togruk. Sainu, bi Mongolui Altai Hoft Ruyavdak. Oh, to the other Ah, вот туда, да? Окей. Okay. I've just walked to the intersection of roads. This one leads towards Western Mongolia and Altai. And following this right road, you can get to the lake Hovsgel. And there is also an alternative way to get to Russia via some country roads. Animals are so curious about us. We just try to fix some some issues that happen with our bumper. Bravo. 
Берлова. Mm, спасибо. Спасибо большое. Окей, Байертай. All right, guys, it was a stroke of luck that my driver gave me a lift here. Now I'm near Gurwanzu Buddhist Monastery. This is the place of interest that I was going to visit only in case uh, if my driver goes here and somehow it happens. So let's explore it. The Erdene Zoo Monastery was established in 1585. This is probably the earliest surviving Buddhist monastery in Mongolia. Abtain Sain Han, ruler of the Halha Mongols, ordered construction of the Erdene Zoo Monastery in 1585 after his meeting with the third Dalai Lama and the declaration of Tibetan Buddhism as the state religion of Mongolia. Planners attempted to create a surrounding wall that resembled the Tibetan Buddhist rosary, featuring 180 stupas, but this objective was probably never achieved. The monastery was damaged in 1688 during one of the many wars between Dzungars and Halha Mongols. It was rebuilt in the 18th century and by 1872 had a full 62 temples and housed up to a thousand monks. In 1939, the communist leader Choi Balsan ordered the monastery destroyed as part of a purge that obliterated hundreds of monasteries in Mongolia and killed over 10,000 monks. Three small temples and the external wall with the stupas survived the initial onslaught. By 1944, Joseph Stalin pressured Choi Balsan to maintain the monastery as a showpiece for international visitors to prove that the communist regime allowed freedom of religion. In 1947, the temple was converted into museums. After the fall of communism in Mongolia in 1990s, the monastery was turned over to the Lamas and Erdene Zoo again became a place of worship. Today, Erdene Zoo remains an active Buddhist monastery as well as a museum that is open to tourists. <laughs> We have to somehow get back to the highway and I'm gonna try to shorten the route and save approximately 100 of kilometers that's doable if I will take sort of the country road let's try anyway so Ладно, спасибо большое. Yeah. Барлала. Окей, Байртай. Да, Байртай. ему, сэшпи. Не понял. Сэшпи. Селфи? Е. Yeah. Давайте. Okay. Давайте. Сайора. Здрасте. Откуда? С России? Вот я вижу, да, номера. Ну, по стопам на попутках. Да, ловлю машины, еду тихонько. Да. All right, guys, I have just reached the main highway that leads from Ulaanbaatar to Western Mongolia. I decided not to shorten the way by a country road. Now I have just talked to some Kazakhs who are also traveling around uh, Mongolia by their car. But unfortunately, their car is full, so they travel like the whole family. Therefore, they were unable to give me a lift. However, they go exactly the same way that I need to go. Well, it's okay, it's okay. So anyway, like in a couple of days, we will cover this distance, so. Машик Берла, да? Да. Байртай. Сайну. Ви Мюнгагуй Баян Харгонру явдак. Я иду в Баян Харгон. Байонгур. 
Uh huh. Okay. Okay, uh, we uh, we are uh, driving today. Can I go with you? Okay. Uh, okay. Из России? Да. Ну как Монголия? Очень хорошо. Я здесь уже 10 дней. То есть вы и по-русски, и по-английски говорите? По-английски. Я, я долго не говорила по-русски, поэтому, поэтому моя английский 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 is better than Russian. Окей, okay, we can speak English. It, mm -hmm. it doesn't really matter. Probably, you, uh, probably you already know that the Mongolia exports coal to China, and uh, yeah. and Mongolia is supposed to build the railway to China like the Chinese standards. And uh, if we if we uh, succeeded to build that road uh, railway, and then we uh, no, we uh, could be easily. You know that the Mongolian economy is the economy is very small, mm -hmm. and therefore if we were uh, built that the railway, then we easily passed uh, this COVID uh, cr crisis. Crisis, mm -hmm. you know. And, but uh, actually, Russia disturbed a lot. Russia blocked politically. Yeah. Uh, and the, therefore, uh, uh, sorry, that's the personally Russian Russian politica is totally against Mongolia. <laughs> Hey guys, it's 400 kilometers from Ulaanbaatar in VR in the town of Arvaiher. Let me tell you that this town looks so, so good. I didn't expect such a beauty in such a remote area of Mongolia. The driver who gave me a lift here, they went to the restaurant. That's why I decided to find a supermarket and buy lots of food for the same price as one dish in the restaurant. Вот, собственно говоря, и магазин. Товары здесь, как и везде в Монголии, смешаны. То есть какие-то из России, какие-то местные. Но есть, естественно, и импорт. Hey, that's one of my favorite beers by now. This one is Mongolian. At least it seems to be Mongolian. All right, guys, it's definitely a lucky day because today I have finally managed to pay via debit card for all of these goods. So today I'm not going to stay hungry 100%. Barola? <laughs> Berta. 20.30 p.m. at the moment and I have reached the city of Bayan Hangor. Not the city, but the town. It's quite good for today because I have covered more than 500 kilometers. So now I'm just going to pitch a tent so very close to the river uh, i'm a little bit shivering because it's kind of cold to be in a t-shirt right now but the weather is actually good it's a new day it's 7 30 a.m at the moment and i woke up an hour before i spent an hour for just surfing the internet now i'm going to boil some water to cook my breakfast my breakfast for today would be this kimchi noodles from South Korea. I pitched my tent in this kind of area. This is the town of Bayan Hangor. Uh, in central Mongolia, I would say close to Gobi Altai region. I decided not to explore this town because it's already 10 a.m. despite the fact that I woke up at 6.30. I spent a lot of time on gathering my stuff. I have to cover a lot of kilometers today and therefore I need to catch as much daylight as possible. Well, I decided that it was not enough to eat some noodles and therefore I went to a local cafeteria and basically ordered this wonderful goulash. in Gobi Desert, absolutely in the middle of nowhere, here is no settlement and only this sort of the cafeteria, side of the road cafe, and that's pretty much it. <laughs> Oh, 
dursun sarragi chinho utse dutse dhan shubiya So it's a deer, right? Yes. All right, we have reached the city of Altai in Mongolia. This is Gobi Altai province, a part of Gobi Desert. Mashi <laughs> Yeah. Bye. Bye. Thank you. The guys are going to overnight here in Altai. I decided to carry on moving anyway, going to continue hitchhiking somehow. And therefore, now we have a great opportunity to explore the city. An interesting fact that I still have not mentioned is that Mongolian alphabet used to look like this formally. Now they have Cyrillic alphabet. Not that much peculiarities in terms of the architecture in the city. Once again, the second time for this day I'm cooking noodles because I don't see cafes within my vision accessibility. The outskirts of Altai city are mostly presented by yurtas. There is not that much wooden cabins. Вот эта встреча не говори. Привет. Приветствую. Ну чё? Ну двигаюсь потихоньку. Да. А я по номеру. Приветствую. Да. Рад встрече. В Якутске. В да. Да. В Якутске. Но вы просто первая машина с российскими номерами здесь вообще за всю дорогу, поэтому вас легко было опознать. Давайте, ребят, удачи вам. Не нужно, потому что саму Очень классно. Было познакомиться. Если договоришься, то не получится это преподавать. Удачи, Давайте, да, ребят. Мне кажется, это не так Давай. работает. Все, хорошо тебе. Вам тоже всего Давай хорошего. Пиво. Счастливого Давай. пути. Сайну. Вимёнгугуй хофтру явдак. Хофт. Хофта. Хофт. А, хофта. Хофт улги туда. А, бай улги. Улги. Да. Да. Ты очень гадь метра. So there was a misunderstanding with the last driver. For some reasons he just uh, gave me a lift to here to the highway and uh, basically left me here. Well, it's fine. Cars run infrequently here, so infrequently, but I believe it's possible to hitchhike at least to Hoft today. Hoft to Yavdak. Hoft. 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 Two stone, huh? You go this way. Can I go with you? Yes. Uh huh. I Bagaj? Okay. I go Hoft, Ulgi, Altai, Tuda. Пешком, да, да, да. Сайну. Машик порвала. All right, guys, it's 2 a.m. right now, but I have just reached the city of Hoft. It means that I've covered 800 kilometers in 15 hours just by hitchhiking. So now I'm just want to find some place to pitch my tent. And that will be, will be it for today, definitely. I'm actually exhausted because that last stretch of 400 kilometers, that second half of the way was the most difficult one, I'd say. The car was full. There was not that much opportunities to uh, seat normally and stuff, but I made it eventually. 
Good morning world from Mongolian town of Hoft. That is my tent that I pitched on the territory of the abandoned construction site. Or this is the future construction site. And this is one of the last towns on my way to the Russian border. I can technically get to the border today if I will hitchhike straight there. I'm not in a rush. And also there is another town that I'm going to visit on my way. So today we are exploring Hoft. And also we're going to explore another town of Ulgi, which is going to be a little bit ahead from here. The outskirts of the city do not look attractive. However, we are gradually approaching the residential area. There is a place of interest in Hoft, such a monument to the Wellington. Actually, two wellies. But by now, this is the only place of interest that I have found. Another attraction in Hoft is the building of the State Theatre of Drama. There is a mosque in Hoft. This is its central mosque. Well, basically because Western Mongolia is populated more by Muslims than, uh, than Eastern, Central or Northern or Southern part of it. Well, I'm on Mongolian cities and towns. Hoft has left the worst impression in me by now because there is a lot of abandoned places, firstly. Secondly, I haven't found a reasonable place to eat, to have a breakfast. And also there is not that much grocery store. Супер контик. Супер контик. Ага. Там лучше чем. Большую тоже. Чё копай? Чё копай? Ага. Да 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 да. As everywhere in Mongolia, you can see cows and horses walking whenever they want. It seems that they built sort of a new alley or new kind of park in Hoft. There are four sculptures. The one is the dog caravan of camels, three camels. In, in the first camel there is Mongolian Han or perhaps just a leader of the group. All right, it's 20.30 a.m. at the moment. Right now I'm starting hitchhiking towards Ulgi and um, that's the destination for today. It's not that far from here, just 200 kilometers, I guess. We have stopped near the bridge over the river. The river is not that massive. Look, there are horses, yurtas, some people walking around. What a lovely place. <laughs> The water is, by the way, not that cold, maybe because the river is not really deep, it's still getting warm. Guys just basically wanted to brush up a little bit to swim in the river, and I finally also washed my hand with the soap, finally, so now it's much better, because I didn't take a shower for four days, and now I'm a little bit cleaner. Alright guys, I have made it to Ulgi. This is the most Kazakh town in the whole Mongolia because this province is mostly populated by Kazakhs. More than 90% of the whole population in this town seem to be Kazakhs, firstly. And also this is the most, I would say, high town in Mongolia, located um, on 1,700 meters above the sea level. And as you can see here is a bit colder than in the previous town of Hoft. There is gonna be even colder today, especially at night. Well, the town itself looks this way. Hi. Again, it's pretty much the same 
as the rest of Mongolia. To prove the fact that Ulgi is a Kazakh town, even the names of street, like street signs, are in Kazakh language here. The downtown of Ulgi, so the architecture here is quite urban type. I mean that blocks of flats, four or five stories, and also some detached houses, suburbs. Well, there is not that much yurtas, not that much national dwellings here. Most of them are on the outskirts of the city. You can even notice that some buildings are pretty new. So we are in the very heart of Ulge. This is its downtown. It's actually the central square of the city. There is the monument to some prominent Mongolian Han or a soldier. Quite a lot of people here, children riding children cars and stuff some hotels so quite a lot of people it's let me tell you that it is busy for such a tiny town for its use the evening i still haven't left the city the time is now 8 pm i'm sitting under the bridge and trying to hide from the rainfall well the rainfall has just died down but according to weather forecast it will be resumed in an hour or maybe two just 10 minutes ago I had a quick conversation with a local who appeared to be Kazakh, obviously. He spoke some Russian and he basically invited me to stay at his place here. Well, for some reasons I denied his proposal because I still want to try, at least try to get to the border today and tomorrow in the morning try to hitchhike across the border. All right, I have finally managed to get to the border. Some guys from Russia gave me a lift here. Now we are going to spend the night straight here. Basically, we are going to pitch our tents and go to the border tomorrow. Good morning, guys. It was the last night in Mongolia see two tents the left one is mine the right is of my driver this is basically a line of cars waiting for the opening of the border this is the actual border checkpoint on mongolian side and this is the neutral part of the border between mongolia and russia we have successfully passed mongolian custom and now we are on the neutral territory between two countries heading to russia 